Hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. We have our first requested case, Pennsylvania v. Mims, which for me is even twice the fun because I've never read this one before. So thanks so much for the case recommendation and keep them coming, everybody. Before we hop into Mims, do me a solid hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. It's a barrel of fun over here and off to the case we go. We're going back in time to 1970, where two Philadelphia police officers were on a routine patrol and observed an individual named Harry Mims. Harry was driving in a car, and he had expired license plates. They stopped him, which they're perfectly reasonable to do to issue him a traffic ticket. Again, perfectly reasonable to do. One of the officers approached and asked him to get out of the car and to produce his paperwork. So the standard license and registration, proof of insurance, please. Harry did what he was asked to do. He got out of the car and the officer noticed something interesting. There was a large bulge in his jacket. Fearing for a weapon, the officers then frisked Mims and what they found was a loaded 38 caliber revolver. He was at that point arrested and charged with unlawfully carrying a firearm without a license and for concealing a deadly weapon. At his trial, his attorney filed a motion to suppress under the 4th and 14th Amendment arguments on reasonable search and seizure. Both were denied and Harry Mims found himself rather convicted on both counts. It ended up at the Pennsylvania Supreme Court and that court actually reversed his convictions, finding that the seizure was contrary to the 4th and 14th Amendment of the Federal Constitution. But they did it in a very, very narrow manner. It was one issue that they had problems with. The court said that the officer was completely reasonable in stopping the car for having the expired plates. That was completely okay. And even once Mims was out of the car, the police officer was well within the law to have seen the bulge and then done the frisk, which we've talked about before in Terry v. Ohio. Shameless plug here. The Supreme Court had a problem, though, in asking Mims to get out of the car. That, they found, was an improper seizure. And as a result, because that was improper, Seeing the bulge, which required him being out of the car to begin with, was fruit of the poisonous tree and, as a result, unusable. And yes, that's a case we'll talk about at a later date. The court's rationale for this was that the officer could not point to an objective, observable fact to support a suspicion that criminal activity was afoot or that the occupants of the vehicle posed a threat to police safety. And it's the police safety part that the court is really hanging its hat on. It gets appealed and to the Supreme Court it goes. So the court opened up their analysis of this particular case by pointing out that the Fourth Amendment analysis itself is always about a balance. It's the reasonableness in all the circumstances of the particular governmental invasion of the citizen's personal security. As it gets laid out in the Terry case, reasonableness is described as that balance between public interest and the individual right to personal security and freedom from interference by law officers. And so looking at Mims's case, the Supreme Court limited its analysis to that very narrow discussion about the impermissible seizure and getting him out of the car. And so far as the Supreme Court said, a is fine and C is fine, B is the problem, the Supreme Court is going to look only at B. And their focus as a result is on the incremental intrusion resulting from the request of the officer to have Mims get out of the car once the vehicle was lawfully stopped. Because it's very important to remember, the vehicle is lawfully stopped. Mims has an expired license plate. The police are completely within the law to pull him over. Oakley Dougley. So this is a balancing case. And the court first look at the public interest side of the equation, focusing on the officer's interest. The state had freely conceded that the officer had absolutely, positively, utterly no reason to suspect foul play from Mims at this time of the stop. When he pulled him over, it was just a traffic stop. 
no problems. There was nothing unusual going on. Mims wasn't behaving oddly. Nothing. The officer, though, had a personal practice of asking all drivers to get out of their vehicles for public traffic violations. This was, on the officer's part, a, a precautionary measure to provide that officer with a certain degree of protection. And as a result, the practice is actually justified on that ground. The reason to have the individual step out of the car does a couple of things. It reduces the possibility of problems like the driver making unobserved movements, reaching for things that could be weapons, reducing the likelihood that the officer will be harmed. It also took care of issues like officers standing out on the road where they could be hit by an oncoming car, instead moving all individuals off into the gravel on the side, adding a certain degree of protection. The court said that officer safety is a legitimate and weighty justification for certain behaviors, turning to statistics and discussions of the various dangers to officers present during those traffic stops. And it is actually some interesting data, so if you're interested in those kinds of conversations, I do recommend you go into the case citation down below and take a look at them. Turning then away from the officer and this legitimate and weighty justification, the court looked at the intrusion on public and personal liberty. The court, in looking at this case, found that asking an individual who is otherwise legally detained to get out of the car during such a stop is a de minimis intrusion into that person's liberty. By asking the individual to get out of the car, they are being asked to expose to view very little more of themselves than they would be otherwise were they to stay in the car. The court found that in asking said individual out of the car, it's not a serious intrusion on the sanctity of the person. In fact, it hardly rose to the level of a petty indignity. Again, language out of the Terry case. As a result, the court found that asking a person out of the car is a perfectly legal and constitutional act within the context of this case. Again, highlight Mims was legally stopped. This is not going to be the same kind of conversation were the original stop to have been found unlawful. So, the stop is legal, according to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, and so the Supreme Court adopts it. And in this instance, the Supreme Court says asking him out of the car is perfectly constitutional and lawful. Therefore, the tree is good, so the fruit is good. When he was asked out of the car and the officers saw the bulge and engaged in a frisk under the concepts of Terry, finding the weapon, it's a perfectly justifiable search in this instance for officer safety, and therefore the weapon would not be suppressed. As a result, the court reversed the Pennsylvania Supreme Court's ruling with direction for further proceedings not inconsistent with their findings. But that's not all, because we have Thurgood Marshall and a dissent from said individual. It's actually a pretty interesting one. Justice Marshall took a look at the explicit facts of the Terry case upon which all of this really rests, and he laid out a discussion about the facts of the case and exactly how those facts drove the finding in that instance. Justice Marshall, however, looked at the facts of Terry and then looked at the facts in the case we have with Mims. And in this instance, Marshall says that the officer had no hint, zero idea that the respondent might have a gun or be dangerous as the officer in Terry did through his observations of the individuals acting oddly, apparently casing out a jewelry store, etc. The car in this instance was stopped for only a routine traffic stop, but then the officer further intruded on Mims without any individualized reason to fear him. Now, remember, the court mentioned the language in Terry regarding officer safety. Marshall is hanging his hat here and saying that there's no reason for the officers to have feared him. They can't point to it. And as a result, the result can't 
be hung on the Terry stop, on the Terry decision, which limits the nature of the intrusion on a person by reference to the reason for the stop. And that is the underlying takeaway from Marshall's dissent is that the intrusion has to be tied to the reason for the stop. In looking to Terry, the court says that the officer's action must be reasonably related in scope to the circumstances which justified the interference in the first place. In this instance, according to Marshall, the circumstance justifying the interference is an expired tag. That's what the police have to stop Mims with. And as a result of that, there's absolutely no relation, according to Marshall, at all between the circumstance of the stop the tags, and the order to get out of the car. He found as a result of that that the court was actually expanding Terry's reach, which was an expressly narrow hold, in what he found to be an impermissible way. But I'm going to leave that up to you in the comment section, because that was Pennsylvania v. Mims. So go ahead, reach out down below, let me know what you think. Was the majority opinion correct? Was the intrusion so minimal, so slight, that it was perfectly acceptable for the officer to order an individual from their car? Or is Justice Marshall correct? That there has to be a far closer tie between the circumstance of the intrusion, in this case the stop, and the further action and restraint of the individual, in this case, ordering Mims out of the car. Let me know what you think down below, but until the next time we are together, I hope everyone is well.